Hey, 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 Chica. Welcome to the Lavalda Show Women of Power podcast, the show where women share their personal power tools, the techniques, strategies, and ways of being which have enabled their business and life success. I'm your host, Lavelda Vincenzi, a female speaker, mentor, speaker, and event host on a mission to unleash authentic, powerful female voices onto the world. In today's episode, we'll be uncovering the power tools of Karen Baines. Karen is a conscious creation mentor and works with passionate, ambitious entrepreneurs, teaching them how to master their own creational process in their business and finances in order to unlock and reach their next level of income. Today, we'll be talking all things money as Karen teaches that money is simply a very happy byproduct of alignment within you and the vital financial component of running your business. Understanding your own alignment and energetics of money offers you the opportunity to increase abundance, alignment, and a whole new way of working. Now, remember that all the links that are shared in today's show are in the show notes, and the only way to ensure that you get your regular fix of this show is to click that subscribe button, like now, now, to make sure that you know when updates have been added. Now, I think this is quite enough from me for now, so let's get on with the show. And we're back. It's the Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast. Welcome, Chicas. Um, My name's Lavelda Vincenzi. I'm an international moderator, MC, and speaker. And in today's show, oh, you know when you just find guests and you just know people. So my guest today is a wonderful soul. We actually worked very closely together. We were joint on a on a mastermind together for a number of, for about a year, I think it was in the end, actually. Uh, we did this joint mastermind. And what I got to learn from her, I was one of her clients. You know, we've worked together for a number of years. And what I love is at the time, she shifts, she shifted a little bit, but at the time she was doing a lot of stuff around money alignment, karmic money, but doing it very differently because believe it or not, she used to be an accountant. And then she went on to the woo-woo side of the bridge. And now she's brought woo-woo and like accounting, like, you know, serious scientific stuff together and made a bridge so that she's for both people, which I thought was awesome. So Karen Baines, welcome to the show. Thank you, my darling. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to talk to you. Feels like forever. I know. I could not do something around women of power and not talk money. It just felt like, how can we, how can we do this and not address one of the elephants in the room, specifically for business people, right? You can't get away with it. You're either, you know, it's, it's cash flow it's profit margins, it's getting the clients selling to them, it's the time versus money element, it's the pricing, it's the, you know, the meltdown. Can you help people understand how you ended up getting into what you're into? Because honestly, you've got, you've got both sides of the fence. I've met a lot of people who will talk about the energy of money, but Mm -hmm. not necessarily have, let's say the, the same corporate background where they Mm -hmm. really understand the the way that money flows through a business, Mm -hmm. but you got both. So how'd you end up doing that? (laughs) Um, I fell into bookkeeping um, out of necessity. When my husband, I was, I was a, like a mum of a young family at the time. My kids have like mainly, mainly sort of grown up now. Um, But at the time I was a mum of a young family. My husband decided that um, out of necessity, he was going to start to run his own business. And along with being a sole trader, as we call them here in the UK, you need to fill out a tax return every year. And um, that's part of the legal system. And so at the time, I knew nothing about any of that stuff. And I was lucky enough to be introduced to um, a really powerful amazing influence in in my life who's and she still is actually and I know you know her as well um our mutual current accountant but I met her way back in the day and she she showed me um like the like the basic workings of what I needed to do to keep on top of my husband's tax return every year and for me while she was teaching me, 
she kind of recognized something in me that I didn't immediately recognize in myself, which was uh, what she called, uh, I had a knack for bookkeeping. I see it, I still see it as a puzzle that needs to be solved. And I love solving puzzles. I do jigsaw puzzles in my spare time. I mess about with flower arranging so that it looks balanced and organized but beautiful. There's part of me that, like the Rubik's Cube for me, was fascinating as a kid, getting it all back in order. So I've got, there's a part of me that's very aligned to create order and beauty even out of seemingly chaos I suppose and I loved I just got totally lit up um by pulling all this information from all these different places and putting it in a place so that somebody else could understand it and she recognized that in me and encouraged me to like do bookkeeping learn bookkeeping and step into that arena um, and I abs and I excelled at it, and I absolutely loved it. I found it very therapeutic, quite easy, um, and at the same time, Lavelda running along in the background very quietly, and I was very much trying to compartmentalise these two things in my life, which is extraordinary because what I teach now is you can't compartmentalise energy, right? But I'd always had a fascination from a very young age um, in um, self-development, self-improvement, purely because I was a very unhappy child. I didn't have what I, was, I would call an unhappy childhood at all. It was, it was tough, you know, single parent, mum, with three of us working three jobs, blah, 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 blah. Mm. But it wasn't an unhappy childhood, but I was a very unhappy child. Felt very much like I was broken and something was missing. So I was in therapy. I was in counselling by the time I was 11. I'm 50 now. So that tells you how far back that was. It wasn't really a thing. And I discovered self-help books and I read a lot of self-development stuff. And then I, like in 2011... 2012 I discovered universal law and energy and and that opened up a whole new thing for me so these two worlds ran parallel but I really tried to keep them very separate until at some point in the journey as often is the case when you're meant to be on a certain path when you're guided to a certain path these two worlds just collided and I realized that what I was doing was I was looking at the accounts and having conversations with my clients about their accounts. And I'm like, and they're lighting up like Christmas trees. I'm like, well, I'm having conversations and I know exactly in my own mind why X, Y, Z isn't working for them. And then you kind of, and, and they just kind of merged quite organically to the point where it was very clear that what I needed to be doing in the world was actually coaching business women, predominantly other entrepreneurs, how they're always speaking the language of money and whatever it is they're doing that is either going to create more income for them or not. And in the industry that, you and I kind of frequent where it's a very obviously a con very conscious industry where we're um, where we hear the words mindset and um, energy and consciousness and all that kind of thing we deal with coaches and healers I, I work with a lot of coaches and a lot of healers not just but a lot of them mm -hmm. And there seems to be a real overlap at the moment where people think that mindset is this, like getting your mindset right is enough and getting your mindset right is, is all you need to do. And actually the language of money isn't just mindset. Mindset is a tiny part of the equation. The language of money actually is energetic and that's what I teach and what I coach in a really grounded and practical way, I guess, because I have that background. 
so that does hopefully that answers the question <laughs> i mean it's illuminating i'm sitting mm. here like taken back to when mm. i first heard you speak yeah. about it and i just thought this is incredible i like it when i find people who've got that beautiful slightly different angle to things where they mm. can bring something new and fresh you touched on something there I, I kind of like to expand on a little bit. So yeah. you mentioned when people are thinking about money, especially nowadays when more people are becoming more conscious mm -hmm. and we, we can kind of liken it to like a money mindset. What to you is, <laughs> I see, y'all need to watch this video. She's like rolling her eyes like, oh God, here we go. What is the difference between money mindset and money energy and the way that you talk about it? I elude often to mindset masturbation. I talk about mindset masturbation and how there just isn't a place for that in our lives. People think that if they go away and journal or watch, um, I don't know, watch inspirational videos or listen to inspirational podcasts or do affirmations all day long or put post-it notes around them all day with like um affirmations on or do con like sit in front of like sit with crystals and whatever doing vis creative visualizations all that and that they're gonna create a successful business or be aligned to create more income and it's just not true. There is absolutely, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I am not dissing any of those practices. Not at all. There is a place for all of that. Everybody has their own most aligned version of spirit, healthy spiritual practice. I completely advocate a healthy spiritual practice, but unfortunately, people kind of got into a, a space where they thought that if they just created a vision board and, and focused on it for an hour a day, that that was going to get the Ferrari on the drive. I can remember we were on a call and I, I do confess right here, right now to stealing it from you when you actually, we had this conversation and you were like, humana, 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 humana. That is exactly it. That's what you do not want to be doing. You can't humana, humana, humana your way to a, 10k consistent monthly income to new leads new clients you can't it's not the way it works because what goes on in here in your mind your mindset only affects the fourth dimension because it's fourth dimensional okay so it's if you want to create more happy thoughts then yeah go ahead and do happy thought thinking. If you want to create a successful business, you've got to do, you've got to do energetically aligned doing. And unfortunately, many people think that if they go about doing what they've always done with a happy energy, a happy attitude, they're actually going to get the kind of results that we get into business for and it's not going to happen because it's a complete it's a different dimension it's a different direct dimension if you want to affect your physical world and we live as human beings in a physical world in the third dimension and we run third dimensional businesses because money is a very practical thing that creates or gives us very practical experiences to put our very physical bodies into or buys us very physical things like the beautiful couch you've got behind you. That is all very third dimensional stuff. If you want to affect that, you've got to do energetic alignment. And when I'm talking about that, what I'm talking about is making sure that the energy underneath that underpins that is the foundation of every single thing that you do every single day is aligned to what you say you want and what you say you want to create and unfortunately 
this thing around mindset gets people thinking, well, if I do happy thought thinking and then I go and do a ton of stuff that I really don't freaking want to do, I'm going to get what I want. No, because doing things that we don't really want to do actually resonates energetically to obligation. And I talk about obligation a lot because obligation is toxic. It's toxic to any experience. It's toxic to your business. It's toxic to your life. Because when you're doing obligation, you are saying, I have to, must do, should do, got to. And nobody has to do any of those things. And if they do, kid themselves into doing things that they don't want to do. They're actually doing and choosing what I call a less than experience. And a less than experience, in a nutshell, is devaluing yourself. You're saying, I choose a less than experience because I don't deserve this, or I can't have this, or because someone else wants me to do this, and I have to manage their expectations, blah, 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 blah. And money, energetically, represents value. So when you devalue yourself and your experience, you are saying to the universe, I'm not worthy, I devalue myself. And the universe says, yeah, okay, here you are. Here's some more opportunities to devalue yourself because we're governed by universal law, obviously the law of attraction, which states that like attracts like or the universe can only say yes. You do obligation, you get more op op opportunities to choose obligation, to do obligation, because that's what you say you want. And it energetically is completely misaligned. It's the opposite, if you like, of freedom, which is often one of the reasons why we get into business in the first place, to create freedom. I love this, because I remember um, there was something you said to me, or maybe it's just how I interpreted something you said yeah. to me when we were working together right. one years ago. And... Um, and I remember you kind of being like, it was when you said that, that the, the energy and money, right? And like whatever you spend your money on, that's you saying that's what you want, right? So mm -hmm. then I had to get bleeding conscious. I was like, so I'm spending money because I'm scared. So I want more fear. No. Or I'm spending money out of desperation. Well, I don't want more desperation. Like it just really, it, something in my head just went, mm -hmm. oh, girl, you better think twice. <laughs> like, that's right. you, like when I can see that wherever, whatever I'm choosing to put my money behind, then I'm choosing to, you know, what I'm saying is I value that. And I took that a step further and started thinking, well, when I'm asking people to send money my way, right? So if I'm mm -hmm. selling out of fear or I'm selling out of lack or I'm selling out of desperation or I'm selling because, ah, you know, there's this bill and blah, 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 blah. Actually, that energy is very, very different. Um, oh gosh, there's so much in this. Karen, yeah. yes. whilst we're talking about money and energy, because I don't think we're actually really going to leave this topic because there's so many levels to it. Yeah. What is it that you think, you know, because women, we can often associate our self-worth to the money in our account. Like money is almost driving us. <laughs> like the more that's there, our, our sense of freedom, a whole bunch of stuff can be tied up with, with financials. Mm. So I'm interested from your perspective, looking at energy, looking at the practicalities of money from the bookkeeping perspective, what do you think makes a woman powerful and particularly powerful in relation to her relationship with money? Wow. Um, I truly believe that everybody on the planet, not just women, obviously, mm -hmm. every on, everyone on the planet creates their own lives. It's what we're designed for. People talk about manifesting. That's another one of my pet words that I'm not keen on if you know what I mean. I'm just like, I kind of get very, got a lot of resistance to the word manifesting. Mm -hmm. Purely because I, what I teach is that that's what we're designed to do. The definition of manifesting is creation. Like you are designed to manifest. You are designed to create. That's, you're doing it every day. 
You are the powerful creator and generator of your own life. Money is a very happy byproduct of alignment. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at your bank account and you're seeing it almost like, like you're seeing that it's not as abundant, let's say, as you'd like it to be. And that, that, um, that di th you're allowing that to dictate your worth and you're allowing that to boss you about then actually you are coming at it from the completely opposite perspective than you need to. It is an opportunity for sure to look at that and say, okay, well, where's the misalignment? Because if money is a happy byproduct of alignment and you don't have the amount of money or leads or clients that you say you want, that is a consequence of choices that you're making that are misaligned. So the lack of money, if you like, is just an opportunity. It's a consequence. It's an opportunity to look at what changes you can make to realign because you have created that. Your choices have created that. If money is a happy byproduct of alignment, then a lack of money or is, is a, is a, unhappy byproduct of misalignment yeah so you just got to get like you've got to get get back to okay well what is aligned and um, when you mention that fear and that desperation and actually doing your business from that space that is completely misaligned completely misaligned but the like the the sub note if you like to that is it's not then about going and doing a load of happy thought thinking and then going and doing what you've always done because if you think of it this way if we create if we manifest if that's the word you prefer if we create and that's what we're designed to do through the process of choice and consequences, which is what I, I teach, then every single time you make a choice, the energy underneath the choice is reflected back at you with the energy underneath the consequence that that choice creates. Because the universe reads your choice energetically, says yes, gives you more, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at it from that perspective, Everything that you already have in your life and your business is a consequence of choices you've already made. And if they're not giving you what you want, you're making misaligned choices. And all the freaking happy thought thinking you want to do ain't going to change nothing. Nada, not nah. a thing. Not a thing. You've got to change what you are doing to a more aligned doing and what that often looks like, I mean, I, like alignment, the definition, the most basic definition of alignment, and remember, money is a happy byproduct of alignment, the most basic definition that I can come up with of alignment is you do you. You just do you. That is your power. That is how you create. When you create from you just doing you, you are aligned and money is a happy byproduct of that. Why? Because when you just do you, you are valuing the most important person in your experience. And when you value you by just doing you, the universe says yes to you because you're saying yes to you. Mm -hmm. And because money is how we assign value and because money represents value, that's what we create. Just do you. Just do do you. Yeah. Karen, I don't even know if I need to ask you what your three power tools are. I feel <laughs> like, let me just take a stab, right? Here I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into my yeah. little mojo zone and see if I can like humana humana into it. I feel like it's alignment. Mm. And then maybe the second one is more alignment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then is the third one, wait for it, alignment again. Am I right? It's you got it. Yeah. The power of free alignment, alignment and alignment. <laughs> but I like what you say about it being about choices 
because it's probably one of the most practical ways. I've heard a lot of people speak about getting into getting them and people go, how do I get into alignment? How do I know when I am aligned and when I am misaligned? I mean, you normally know because when you're aligned, it feels good. And when you're not, it feels really crap. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but this idea of, of choices um, is really quite exciting because when you can say, well, hold on a minute, what I'm experiencing now is essentially the byproduct of a series of choices that I might have made yesterday, last week, a year ago. I own those choices. I now can choose to do something different rather than choose to work harder Mm -hmm. something different maybe work but not necessarily hard work yeah absolutely alignment requires effort but it should never be hard work alignment is like when so when we choose to be business owners when we choose to be entrepreneurs female business owners who are stepping into our power um we're in service right what we're actually doing is saying, I choose to add value to the world, to my clients in exchange for money. I choose to add value, take it one step further, I choose to add value through my gifts, through my divine gifts. I choose that in a way that adds value to the world in exchange for money. We're not running charities here. We have a responsibility to show up for our clients when we say we're a business owner. And money, as much as it represents value, it resonates to responsibility and power energetically. Before you spend it, And when you spend it, you realign it because you're assigning value to a different energy. But energetically, it naturally resonates to responsibility and power. When you choose to be a business owner, you then have a responsibility to add value to the lives of other people through your gifts. And you also have a responsibility to make sure that there's an energetic exchange for that value in the form of money. I have a question for you, Karen. Yeah. I do. You saying that, I'm sat here and I'm going, so what about those people looking to start a business? And they're in those early stages and there's all these possibilities out there, right? There Mm. is the online marketing because you just market an online product and you can work from Mm. home and it generates a bunch of cash or you do property or stocks and shares or become a coach. When you're now saying, look, do you, how, how do you, how do you align that or how do you interpret that in relation to, look, I want to make money here. So where do I start? Where do I put my energy behind it? Or the business right now isn't generating as much cash as I want. So I'm now thinking of going online because online is where the money's at. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you've got a take on interpreting that scenario in a way that's powerful and helpful. When I say just do you, what I'm essentially saying is you do what lights you up. So let's take a look at my journey for a minute that I mentioned. They're like signposts. Your soul, your, the part of you, like whatever, you, what, like whatever terminology you're comfortable with, it could be higher power. Um, it, like for me, it's soul. But what I'm referring to when I mention that is the infinite part of you that is within you. Like, and if we are conscious creators, and I just automatically assume that pretty much anyone listening to this is going to be there or thereabouts, because otherwise they wouldn't be interested in anything we've got to say, right? They certainly wouldn't be interested in hanging out with me. And as you said, we've worked together in the past, so we know that vibrationally we're a match. And so we're likely to uh, attract people to us, be a vibrational match for people that are going to want to hear what we've got to say. So let's assume that everybody listening to this right now is a conscious, what I call a conscious creator or is ready to open that door. 
when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about um, what lights you up. And your soul would have been giving you signposts your whole life. So let's go just reverse engineer the journey that I talked about. From, the age, from a very young age, even though I didn't have what you would call an unhappy childhood, financially it was very stretched. I also could see a clear division between in my own family, like extended family, about how, how, how we weren't very well off at all. I mean, literally, my mother's mantra was, we can't afford it. Mm. Yet there were other members of the family who had like no issues with money at all. Right. So I could see a clear division that didn't really make any sense. I felt like very disconnected, like there was something missing, like I was broken. But I also had this real strong sense that I wasn't. I just didn't know what it was. So that takes you on that journey. Right. And then and then I've always loved um, puzzles. I've always loved, like, when I was a kid, like, word searches, um, Rubik's Cube, jigsaw puzzles, right? I used to love, like, drawing and art. But I've always loved creating, like, order mm -hmm. out of chaos. I've always loved organising things. So then you can see, like, the building blocks. I've always been very much a loner. I, I'm, I'm not... Um, like I'm not one for groups, never have been. I'm very much uh, like I, I, I'm a quiet leader. Okay, so all of this is there. All of this is in my history. It's in my past. It's how you choose to spend your time. The gifts that you have that come very naturally to you. And then as we get older and we start to look at how we monetize this going back to your original question what lights you up most like literally when where do you lose time so when you're doing something and you're like oh my god that went in 10 minutes like for me doing like live q and a's for example i've i i love doing that I love being interviewed. It's very similar to doing live Q and A's. My live streams, my, my trainings that I do with people, I just lose time. When I finish them, no matter how I felt when I got on to do them, I always feel re-energized. They're the things that you're naturally good at that you can see that other people aren't necessarily naturally good at. The things that light you up, you can go back over your history, over your time here on our beautiful planet and join the dots if you like. But when I say you just do you, what is you in alignment? There are clues there already of what you like. Like if I didn't run a, like if I wasn't, doing what I'm doing if I wasn't a coach a mentor do you know what I probably do I probably have a florist because I love flowers I love playing with flowers I love the smell of flowers I love the touch the feel the taste of flowers I don't like being outside when the weather's crap so what do you do you have flowers uh, that you create and look beautiful and smell amazing and then you put a house around it so you don't have to be out in the rain boom <laughs> problem solved problem Ta solved now you're around them all the time i exactly. love that bit of it really is about being allowing ourselves yeah. to emerge and allowing the things that logically sometimes in the moment don't make any sense, right? I mean, I was doing interviews for years. I don't know why I did it. I took on a radio show for a year and a half. It took me an hour and a half to get there in rush hour and an hour and a half to get home after my day job. And I still did it for a year and a half unpaid. Unpaid. Why yeah. on earth? Would I? I just loved it. I loved stuff. getting there. I didn't love any of the tech mm -hmm. stuff. That stuff was boring. But mm -hmm. the actual having the discussion, that to me was like fun so yeah. I just kept kind of following those breadcrumbs so having mm -hmm. the space to allow Karen you give so yeah. much value every time I speak to you it's always oh. like a look there's always light bulb moments there's a lot of stuff in here I think a lot of people need to hear 
Um, especially at this time, I mean, the year has been a bit crazy <laughs> and, you know, people are feeling the financial hit on their business as speakers, especially with cancellations and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And mm -hmm. so something that kind of gives hope around thinking and returning back to, to self is quite helpful. So yeah. I know there's going to be people who are listening to this podcast now and thinking, oh, I need more of this woman in my life. Like I really just need more of Karen Baines in my life. <laughs> Where do they go to find out more, to get their find own it. little sampling? Well, there are two places that you can find me because like I said, I'm a quiet leader. So I don't have a Facebook group. Um, you can find me on Facebook, but only on my business page, which is um, you, like if you search Karen Baines Conscious Creation Coach um, and you'll be able to find me on my biz page. There's tons of live videos on there because that's where I do my thing. I live stream um, and my website, which is www.soulwhispers, all one word, .uk. So it's not .co.uk, it's .uk. It's very important. And you'll be able to get to know me a bit better there. Um, you'll be able to sign up for my, like a free money momentum assessment that, will give you an opportunity to have me look at your stuff and have it light up like a Christmas tree for me. So I can give you the biggest bang for your buck energetically in terms of what, what next steps you can take. Because the thing about like alignment, you've got opportunities to what I call leveraging the law. And sometimes especially in the current craziness that is happening right now, when we've got real fear and anxiety around, for example, you know, um, money and where our next client is coming from or in your, like, your tribe's case, the next speaking gig, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes it's not helpful to be really focused on that, but you can't help yourself. So what you can do is leverage the law and actually make more aligned choices in other areas. And I talk about time and you as the other powerful ways you can make new energetically aligned choices that energetically, because you can't compartmentalize, you focus somewhere else and the universe will still pick up on that and deliver things to you unexpectedly like an opportunity to speak maybe online instead of offline a new client that randomly out of nowhere shows up wonderful so, all of those links mm -hmm. are in the show notes you just click yeah. on the notes so if you missed it you don't have to rewind and that sort of stuff it's all in the notes so you can get them there karen what last words of wisdom do you want to leave us with? Like when we wrap this up, what do you want rattling about in our heads? Okay. I want to talk, a, like, I, I want to talk a little bit about obligation, just real quick. I talk about obligation as it being the, like, it's the main energy that you don't want to do. If you're running a business, even in life in general, you do not want to choose obligation. It is toxic. Right now, as we speak, we're just being we're just being told that we need to stay home because of the virus and we can't do this and we can't do that and we have to do this and we've got to do that. And suddenly, through no fault of our own, I'm not going down that rabbit hole, but through no fault of our own, we're being told what we can and can't do to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. And obviously like, you know, the ripple effect from that. So it's really important right now, that first and foremost, we understand the difference in terms of the obligation we suddenly feel because we're being told what we can't, can and can't do, why it's slightly different to the obligation I talk about a lot. It's different because we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to care for ourselves, to take care of our families. So actually, although it feels like obligation, we have a responsibility and money aligns to responsibility and power. So that's the first thing. 
whilst this is going on though it's really important that where we can we leverage the law so even though it feels like obligation that we need to stay at home and da 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 at the moment there are areas in our lives and our businesses outside of this that we do not have to choose obligation we do not have to choose obligation this is an opportunity for everybody to look at their stuff and up level they do not you do not have to choose obligation so have a feel into like look at it from this way anything that you're saying i have to i must do i got i've got to or i should do if you're saying anything internally before an activity that you're doing other than what has been put in place to keep us safe at the moment i must do i should do like i have to go and do a facebook live for example no you don't no you don't nobody's got a gun to your head you know i have to um oh gosh help me out i have to I have, I have to, to send that email. I have to do have something to, online. Yeah, I need I to create to an online that. program. Yeah, none of that. Or even in your, like, in your life, I have to go and load the dishwasher. Or I have to, like, I have to go and, like, do the ironing. Like, no, you don't. Not right now. I have to go and check up on my friend. No, you don't. Not right now. If you don't... You need to be detoxing as much obligation in your life as you possibly can right now while these, while these restrictions are being put into place. This is a time to leverage the law where you do have power. And that's what, where I want to, because like, it's, it's just really important. And I you think know? it's important not just now, but throughout. You, there's exactly. always regardless of what's going on, whether it's the current situation. So at the time of recording this, we're in the midst of crazy Corona town um, and there are lockdowns going on all over the place. And so there's a lot of people who are self-isolating or having to be isolated as a result of it. And that creates fear and panic for, 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 some, for some people. At the same time, whether it's a global pandemic or a personal something going yeah. on, I think it's beautiful to have that reminder. We always have a choice and have. whatever's appearing right now is as a result of choices that we either made, that we've made at some point in the past, distant or, you know, immediate or distant past. And when we're given an opportunity to be able to look at the impact of those choices, take it, take a moment, change the choices, create something different. And for crying out loud, please do something that you're going to love. Uh, yeah. If you have not yet subscribed to this show, please do it straight now because we've got so many more of these amazing um, guest talks coming up. Uh, do drop, uh, make sure that you click on the links in uh, the show notes as well. Give us a five-star review, jump over there, share it with your friends. There'll be people who need to hear this money conversation at some point. So do, do make sure that you share that. Karen, Thank you a million times over for joining us today. And thanks for your wisdom. Thank you for having me a million times over. And until next time, this has been the Lavelle, the Women of Power show. See you in the next episode.